One of the things I'm driven to discover are those things in a community context that truly influence the lives of children, youth, and families. What are those components that need to happen either through a program or a particular issue that would enhance their lives? I'm, as I've said before, I'm driven to discover and understand how other adults make a huge difference in kids' lives. I have two tracks of research. My first track is really looking at the role of community, particularly community programs, in really impacting or affecting the lives of young people as a context. I'm interested in how out other adults, other than parents, really influence the lives of young people. So I was interested in how do those community programs as a collective come together and so I do research on quality of programs, impact of programs. So that's one area of research. My other is much more around public policy. I'm very interested in how public policy influences the lives of families. We have a very active program of research where we do um, concentrated pieces of research reviews that are then used in public policy documents for the Department of Defense and other places. Well, I think one of the things we're really becoming aware of is when public policy is formed outside of good research, sometimes those policies don't work as well for families as they could. We know that when you take research-based information, which has already been founded in the literature, and you take numerous studies and you put them together, then you have a basis from which to make those decisions. Just making a decision on what you think might work doesn't always provide the greatest outcomes. So one of the things you see in this department is really around looking at what do families need, what would work best. Department of Defense um, is not the department that works with the veterans, that's the VA. Um, I, they're two separate entities. The Department of Defense has a family unit which is focused on active duty um, members and their families. They are, they call their, their mission is to be what they call mission ready. So having families that are secure and grounded and are functioning well is important for the mission of the Department of Defense. And so they look at things like spousal employment, they look at child abuse and neglect, they look at physical activity, and they look at things like um, after school programs, child care, et cetera. So they're really invested in making sure the families of the military personnel are well tended and well cared for. The really interesting things about this work is the Department of Defense has a really um, strong belief that what they do should not only influence the lives of military personnel and their families, but the civilian population as well. We saw this with their child care centers. Um, they probably, um, they at one point realized they really wanted to make a change, and in doing that, they really set policy and quality standards for other child care units all across the United States they're really seen as the blue ribbon or the blue star programs to look at when it comes to quality. Well, I think that one of the things we forget is that theory really does inform practice. Sometimes, as we said, with public policy, if you go off and do the work without being well grounded in the theory and the research, you often make decisions based on emotionality. You think about what it, how it feels rather than what works. And sometimes those things align and sometimes they don't. I think about the work that we do with refugee families and the work we do with families that have been through trauma or military families. All of those families come with unique set of experiences and they have unique needs and if we decide they're all the same or we decide on an intervention without really considering the theory and the research to inform the practice, then we go at this without real knowledge, which may or may not injure them, but it also may or may not help them. And so I'm really, really a strong believer that practice needs to be grounded both in theory and research and that that informs how you move forward. Well, one thing I know is this area of research is going nowhere. 
except to expand. Because what we know, whether you're talking about technology in families, which we research, or you're talking about how you deal with a death in a family and distribute the wealth among the members of the family, those things will never change. Those are pretty, pretty ingrained in everyone's lives. We've seen it since the beginning of time. How we do that research may change dramatically. That's one of the exciting things to me. I don't know what research will look like in 30 years, but I see how it's changed over the last 10 years or 15 years. We never used computers the way we use computers now. We never thought about how to use video cameras in the same manner that we use them now. The portability of all of that equipment makes a huge difference in how you study families. If you can take a small video camera into a home or into a community and follow a family around, you can learn a great deal. Um, you can't take huge pieces of equipment and follow them around. We now have handheld devices that lets us, lets us collect data in a hurry. You can hand them out. People can fill in their surveys in a very short period of time. So how we do the research will change dramatically. Topics will change because technology is going to change, the world's going to change. But there's some basics that we've been studying for a very long time. And that's the interactions of these families inside their communities, the interaction between family members, and how we work together as a community to promote enhanced family lives.